In 2007, BBC Wales brought us a new sitcom created by Ruth Jones and the most irritating man on the planet. Disregarding the huge impact Gavin and Stacey had on British culture, similar to shows like The Inbetweeners released just one year later, it's also just a good show. It's heartwarming, clever, and most importantly, funny. Also similar to The Inbetweeners, it didn't take long before the US decided that this concept that's only really possible due to a very specific brand of British humour would work perfectly presented to American audiences for some reason. This meant that in 2013, Fox planned to premiere a 13 episode run of a Gavin and Stacey remake titled Us and Them. Although Fox clearly had no faith in the show as soon as production started, turning the 13 episode series into just 7 episodes and the 2013 release into Never Ever. Don't worry though, because 5 years later, 6 out of the 7 episodes that were made were picked up by American streaming service Crackle, presumably named after the sound of the 5 extra scripts burning after not being commissioned by Fox. And it sucks. Like, it really sucks. So, uh, are you all set for tomorrow? Jeez Louise, I can't believe we're finally gonna meet in person. Not even as a remake of Gavin and Stacey, just as a bland, turn-your-brain-off sitcom, it sucks. But anyone who's seen Gavin and Stacey would know this already. The whole point of the show is showcasing the comedy found in the cultural differences between Wales and England. Gavin is from Essex, Stacey is from Barry, the Shipmans are English, the Wests are Welsh, Ruth Jones is from Wales, James Corden is from the depths of hell itself. The show plays off the stereotypes related to these two places in such an effective way. But hey man, America's like, really big bro. It's gonna be really difficult to communicate huge cultural differences between two people finding love a measly four hours away from each other compared to England and Wales. But the result we get is a big city man-child living in New York and a small town girl living in her small town world, Pennsylvania. Now, I'm sure these two places have their differences regarding floppy pizzas and outdoor barbecues, but the show does absolutely nothing to show these differences. They should have gone full stereotype, really show the contrast between these two families. Stacy should be living in a trailer park, roasting a fresh raccoon she found on the side of the road, and Gavin should be all, Hey, I'm, I'm walking here. I'm meat, my meatballs. I'm spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> but that contrast just isn't there. So what we have now is a show whose premise comes comes down to a man and a girl like each other. So as I said, it's only available to watch on Crackle, but for some reason the seventh episode isn't available anywhere, so I'll just be looking at the first six. And straight from the first scene of episode one, I was confused. I wasn't doing it to you, I was doing it to the horse. I was doing it to the horse! Just to explain what the fuck is going on, every episode starts with an intro to every character, basically showing a small clip of them in some wacky situation taking place during the climax of the episode. It just feels like something's still there. I need you to go get it. Uh -huh. What is going on? What? It was still sticky. Okay, here we go. You know what? Maybe this isn't such a good idea. Why don't we think this through for a second? Watch your fingers. No! <laughs> By the way, that's not even just the first episode. This happens every single time. It's it's confusing, it's not funny. And if I have to hear that fucking guitar riff one more time. <laughs> Shut up! This is not how you start a show. Then, when the episode reaches these points in the story, it does like another little freeze frame and a ding sound effect. The road's for cars! It's a car road! Oh no. Uh -huh. I was doing it to the horse! Come on. Just to let you know, hey, remember 15 minutes ago you saw that short scene that made no sense? Well, this is this is that scene now. We've caught up to that point in the story. Yeah, I get it. Why is that necessary? So episode one of the show is pretty much the same storyline as the UK version, but worse. We begin our story with a badly tracked location title and Stacy at her work on the phone to Gavin. Yes. Jeez Louise, I can't believe we're finally going to meet in person. Jeez Louise, pardon me, Miss Potty Mouth. I know, I have like super polite Tourette's or something. <laughs> now, obviously, a show centered around two people falling in love should at least, that the foundation should be built off of. Every minor decision, every line, every joke should be based off of the two leads having some sort of chemistry. And they do. 
in the UK version. But these two people seem like they hate each other. Every time they kiss, it's like a grandma awkwardly giving her grossed out grandson a kiss goodbye at Christmas. Gavin! Hey! Hi! What's your name? Stacy. I'm Gavin. Hi. Um, can I kiss you? Sure. Even by themselves, both Gavin and Stacy are completely devoid of any character. In fact, actually, before we go any further, let's just have a look at some of the characters that were brutally butchered in this show. <laughs> Stacy in Gavin and Stacy is perfect for Gavin. She's just as spontaneous as him, but also jumps to conclusions way too easily. Hang on a minute. Who's that? It's Bedmore's. Good. Ask him where this stock is. Yeah, we'll do. Hello? Hey, yeah, yeah, so we're on the sun. Gone. Hung up. Ugh. I say no no I'm not it's Gab I think he's finished with me she's easily excitable but also craves a simple life because she's able to appreciate all the excitement that comes from a simple life Stacy and us and them is a cosmic void of nothingness where space and time collide and cancel each other out subtracting molecule from molecule atom from atom until any sense of existence loses any and all definition <laughs> <laughs> Similar to Stacy, Gavin from Us and Them doesn't really have a character and he kind of just reacts to the weirdness from his family. Really, the only personality traits he has is he's nice and I guess a little neurotic. Gavin is a, a nice guy, he's a little neurotic. Oh, there we go. It's easy to watch a show like Gavin and Stacy and come away thinking Gavin is the straight man, always the voice of reason and reacting in a relatable way to the other characters, but he does have a real distinct fleshed out personality. From the first episode, he shows he's an extremely passionate guy that really romanticizes romance. <laughs> He runs to the bus to say goodbye to Stacy after their first night together and then gets a taxi home only to drive all the way to Wales to say goodbye again. This isn't just a way of showing his love for Stacy, but it's more about the act itself. He likes the idea of going above and beyond for those he cares about and showing that. It's not that he needed to see her straight away, it's that he's showing his willingness to drive to fucking Wales just to see her. But the US version gives us none of that. Even by episode 4, he's still not sure whether he should call Stacy his girlfriend. What are you, 17 years old? Get a grip. So this version of Smithy is called Archie for some reason, and he's just a douchey, annoying man-child who for some reason can't go one episode without getting his tits out. Say what you want about James Corden, but his Gavin and Stacey era does look good. His and Ruth Jones's writing is great, and his portrayal of Smithy is almost iconic at this point. When Smithy gets visibly heartbroken at the news of Gavin and Stacey getting engaged, it works and makes the character likeable because the level of pettiness and selfishness is so extreme that it's almost ridiculous. You didn't think to talk this through with me first, huh? But when Archie acts like an arsehole because Gavin's spending time with Stacy, it just makes him come across as an arsehole. Okay, uh, why don't we paint the walls pink and have a cupcake party? Have fun loving each other. I'm gonna go to my room and love myself. Also, his eyebrows don't fit the rest of his face. <laughs> <laughs> Nessa sucks. No one's acting in the show is very good anyway, but she's just so bad. Well, heads up. Looks like we're gonna be getting there ahead of schedule. W like when? Assuming your uncle can't sweet talk security. 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. Get to work. N Nessa! Did she just drop her phone at the end of the take? This is, this is never explained by the way. Nessa from Gavin and Stacey is almost stoic to the point that it's funny. It's rare you'll see a visible reaction from her, but Ruth Jones plays it so well that you can tell it's just a barrier she sets up. And it makes the times when she does react so much more poignant. But Nessa in this is trying so hard to be a badass, it just comes across so fake and embarrassing. <laughs> Brynn is probably the best character in Gavin and Stacey. Rob Brydon knows his character so well, and you can see aspects of Bryn come through in shows like Would I Lie to You. He's emotional and sensitive and protective and fucking crazy. I'll no, get it arrest, you link munching sheep shagger! Look at yourselves! Will you just look at you yourselves? 
Brian, on the other hand, is stupid and unlikable. Even writing this script is one of the most frustrating things I've done for my YouTube channel, because there's truly very little to say. I can write essays upon essays on the traits and dynamics and relationships between the characters on Gavin and Stacey, but us and them is so surface level and so soul draining that my mind just goes blank as soon as I try to come up with any description of any aspect of the show. But look, this complete botching of these beloved characters doesn't anger me. I'm, I'm a pretty chill dude. And whilst it may appear like this US version has taken a huge wet shit on the time and effort it took to build the characters of the original, those characters do still exist. You can go and watch Gavin and Stacey whenever you like, and the existence of this show that most likely none of you have seen anyway won't get in the way of that. But as I've said before, Us and Them doesn't only fail as an adaptation of its source, like Grace Point or the US in between us. My mum can happily sit and watch series 94 of Home and Away once a week, which is only marginally better than those two shows. Shows, us and them fails on a whole different level and it comes down to one thing the jokes and i use that term in the loosest possible way because us and them doesn't have jokes it will try to trick you into thinking it does but it doesn't dang all i can make are proper nouns or bad things to call black people <laughs> there are clear attempts that sound kind of like jokes where the actors will deliver the line in such a confident, witty way that you can easily think, oh, I, I just missed a joke there. But if you actually listen to what they're saying, most of the time it's, it's pure nonsense. Because Gavin's just a nice guy you met through work till he makes you feel like you're on one of those upside down roller coasters the Arabs are always building. I, I, I've Googled it. I, I've looked up Arabs building roller coasters for hours. I've asked friends and family. What the fuck does this mean? So... so... Talk to you later. Yeah, I was... Bye. Okay. That was not a quality hang-up. So unfinished. Like when you were little and you'd make boom boom and then you get in the car and realize there was still a little bit left. What exactly is the joke here? That Gavin sometimes had some shit left over in his nappy when he was a baby? Get it? Poop. Because poop is funny. Long distance relationships can be tricky. Like trying to avoid eye contact with the homeless. Do you see what I mean? The setup is so painfully obvious. Most jokes are structured around setups and payoffs, but usually you want to make that setup as natural feeling as possible. But Gavin saying so, so unfinished. unfinished, and then Mick, I mean Michael, saying long distance phone call conversations can be tricky, is clearly just so that they can follow it up with a punchline. But then the punchline isn't even good. Trying to avoid eye contact with the homeless. Oh, that, that's so dark, but also morbidly relatable and, and cheeky. <laughs> Going back to episode 1 for a second, there's a scene that really brought back feelings of watching the US Office for the first time. The fact that most of the first season of the US Office is literally a line for line recreation of the UK version has been talked about to death at this point, but it's relevant here for different reasons. At least those adapted scenes understood the core of what makes the scene funny, even if it wasn't executed that well. Put my stuff in jello again! <laughs> That's real professional. Thanks. It's the third time, and it wasn't funny the first All two right, times either. I'll put my stapler inside a jelly again. That's the third time he's done it. It wasn't even funny the first time. You can watch this scene and still find the humour in it. It's just that the fact that it was already done better years before brings it down. But with the introduction of Bryn, I mean Brian, in Us and Them, and him presenting the rape alarm to Stacy, even if you don't remember the original scene, it's still not funny. I brought ice cream oh. and a rape alarm. Uh -huh. <laughs> what makes this scene funny in Gavin and Stacey is the genuine obliviousness of Bryn. His intentions are so pure, but what he's saying is crazy. These things are important. My brother would turn in his grave if he thought I wasn't looking after his little girl. And the truth is, I don't want anyone in this room being raped, myself included. It feels like the actors and writers are just begging us to laugh, which is even worse seeing as they're literally using some of the same lines. If you come back Sunday, raped, and I showed you how to use it, I'll rest easy in my bed. You come back Sunday ripped, the fault will lie sorely at your door. I'm gonna show you how to use this. That way, if God forbid you come back all raped, I will rest easy in my bed knowing I did everything I could to prevent it. At least the US office jelly scene actually seems natural, but here it's the complete opposite. When you can feel the desperation and self-awareness from the actors that this is so funny and wacky, it not only makes the scene not funny, but surrounding the subject of rape, it actually makes it quite tasteless. The humour in the same scene in Gavin and Stacey comes from Bryn's genuineness, but in Us and Them it seems like everyone just thinks the humour comes from the shock value and discussing rape in such a casual way. That's not the 
the point of the scene. It needs to be character focused, not subject focused. But as we've already determined, Us and Them has no characters. So yeah, the jokes are shit, the characters are non-existent, so far so good. After these two aspects, there are two more basics a sitcom needs to even be accessible to the dumbest of dumb demographic. Is the presentation serviceable and are the storylines good? Do the characters even have the minorest of minor arcs? And surprise, surprise, Us and Them fails embarrassingly at these as well. It's shot fine, you know, like it, it's in focus most of the time. At least one person's doing their job right. But it's pretty apparent that whoever was directing these episodes had no idea what they were doing. So many times, a shot with two actors in frame will cut to a one shot and it's so clear the editor didn't have enough coverage and so just zoomed in in post. Which is shit I used to do on my student films at uni. But who gives a shit, you know? That doesn't matter. I'm only bringing it up because I want to seem smarter. You know, the, the, the general audience isn't going to care about this. They're not even going to notice. But what does matter are the storylines. Every episode gets worse and worse and the stories make no sense. Keep in mind, these are 22 minute episodes with an extremely basic premise. The adventures of family of man and family of woman. This is some Doctor Who level potential for imagination. It shouldn't be that hard to just write a story that makes sense. But they can't even do that. There are plot holes, character arcs that are set up at the beginning of episodes just to be dropped by the time the next one rolls around. The entire 22 minutes of every episode are storylines that would have been a 5 minute scene in the original Gavin and Stacey. So as I mentioned, episode 1 basically just follows the same story as the first episode of Gavin and Stacey. Gavin and Stacey meet as well as Archie and Nessa, they go to a club, they go home, Archie and Nessa fuck. But plot twist, Gavin and Stacey don't because they need that as the central goal of the two characters for episode 2. <laughs> Episode 2 starts and ends with the conflict of Stacy's family trying to get into a concert and Gavin and Stacy having sex. End of episode. Episode 3, Stacy's family and Gavin go to a karaoke bar and Gavin bonds with Stacy's mum by singing Afternoon Delight, a, a song detailing the pleasures of daytime sexual encounters. <laughs> It was a clear opportunity to just completely copy the scene from Arrested Development. That afternoon delight was more adult themed than its innocent melody would have you believe. And the thought of loving you is getting so exciting. Sky rockets and delight. Hang on, maybe. But nothing funny happens. I mean, what is this, a fucking comedy or something? Episode 4's arc consists of Stacy and Nessa trying to relive their old college days by eating ice cream and showing their titties to truck drivers. Man, were my uni days wasted. But then realising that they're all grown up now and don't find this stuff blah, as blah, fun blah, as they blah, did blah, when blah, they were blah, younger. Blah, blah, blah. Pretty much the basic go-to storyline that ensures a half-baked relatable character arc when you don't have any original ideas. Then episode 5 comes around and this story is about Stacy's mum and Gavin's mum learning to get along. But the only problem is they came up with this arc after every other episode was written because no interaction with them before this episode starts even hints towards the fact that they don't like each other. The episode begins, these two characters decide to hate each other for the sake of an episode conflict and then they like each other by the end. And oh my god, the way they solve this conflict is so stupid. So the episode takes place at a marathon for cancer which Gwen's dad died of, which might surprise you if you've seen the original Gavin and Stacey, as we never actually find out what Stacey's dad died of, so it's interesting here that they're actually given some context to a major event in Stacey's- Well, Gwen's been trying to finish ever since her husband, my brother, died of cancer. Oh. He, he had a uh, malignant mole on his shoulders about the size of an almond. He was biking to the doctor to get it removed when he got hit by a train. <laughs> get, get it? We thought he died of cancer, but actually got run over by a fucking train, even though 10 seconds earlier Brian said, My brother died of cancer. <laughs> don't, don't think about it, just, just laugh. Laugh at the funny people saying funny sentences, please. My wife said if I pen one more failed sitcom that doesn't get commissioned, she's gonna leave me and she'll take the kids this time, I know it. My son's already becoming distant, all I need is one more win. One more win and my family will finally understand that I can provide- Anyway, so the whole point of this episode is that Gwen's never been able to finish the marathon. N not win, finish. I mean, she could just walk it. But towards the end of the race, Pam realises that if she hurls scathing insults towards Gwen, it will anger her so much, fill her with such an overwhelming tsunami of hatred and rage, that she finishes the race and now they're best friends. It was here I realised just how fitting the title of the episode, Corn and Cancer, really was. <laughs> Now, by this point in my first run through of the show, I thought there was no way the next episode could get any worse. But it does. You only have cereal and sugar packets. What happens if you actually want to eat something? We order in or we eat super sweet cereal. <laughs> So 
So the conflict in this episode is Archie is sad that Gavin and Stacy are spending time together. So Gavin says, how about a road trip? But then he just ends up bringing Stacy anyway, so I, I don't really get what that was supposed to solve. But where are they going on this road trip? College! College. college. That's right, college. They're going to college. This group of 30-year-olds is going on a short vacation to college. All good. Figured it out. And they all lived happily ever after. With one of the best savings rates in America, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Now, there is a reason for this. Archie's trying to reconnect with his old lover who apparently is still in college. Let's not think about that too hard, but what worries me more is that Gavin doesn't even question his motives for wanting to go back to college. He just says, yeah, that sounds fun. College city. College. Yep. Alright, let's do it. But that's just the A story. There are two more sub-stories going on in this episode. Impressive, I know. One can be summed up from start to finish right now. Michael and Pam stand outside their apartment complex and look for possible dating candidates for Gwen. I mean, she didn't ask. It's, it's never discussed about. We just cut to them and they look at Guy and say, Hey, 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 hey. How about that, Candy? I can see Gwen liking a sweet bit of meat like that. Then throughout the episode, they see more guys say they either would or wouldn't be right for Gwen, and that's it. There's no payoff to this, they never pick a guy, it's a waste of everyone's time. The other story is that Ness's dad comes home after leaving her when she was 12. The main reason he's there is to fix up a car he left, and he also wants to apologise to Nessa, but she don't want to hear your apology, bitch. Again, the most standardly standard sitcom story ever. He's shown to be a, a pretty shitty person, like clearly doesn't care about Nessa at all. He chokes out Brian as soon as he gets to their house, but how is this resolved? I know I haven't been the best father. I've been the worst father. Look, I'm really sorry about being so bad at being a dad. You deserve more. I'm over it. <laughs> That's it. Back to the A story of a 30-year-old Archie tracking down his 18-year-old lover. This has been mildly amusing until now, but this is the moment when you wake up. You can still get out of here with a shred of dignity. Why the fuck did you drive all the way to your old college, sneak into a party at 30 years old, and then try to talk Archie out of even talking to the girl? I mean, uh, I, I agree, you know, it's borderline predatorial, but you're already trespassing on a college campus. You might as well add this to the police report as well. Oh God, I hope you're not doing some kind of lame Katherine Heigl movie thing, because that would be really embarrassing. At Domino's, we oh man, I was right on the edge of my seat. To... Surprise, surprise though, she rightfully turns him down and they all go home. The end. That, that's the end. Why did I go through this entire season? Fuck my life. But anyways, if you want to find out for yourself just how bad this show is, then you know how to find it. But if this review has taught you anything, I'd hope it's not only that this show is a massive pile of steam and shit, but also... James Corden isn't that bad. I mean, yeah, he's annoying. He, he does that irritating fake posh accent on his dreadful talk show and the amount of awkward, uncomfortable public appearances he's associated with is growing week after week. But there was a time where he was loved all over the UK. He's responsible for creating one of the best British sitcoms of the past 20 years and the 2019 Christmas special of Gavin and Stacey proves there is still hope for the angry little Eggman left. Somewhere deep, deep inside. Until then, America, Please stop doing this. I, I can't take it anymore. England can't take it anymore. We, we've been through enough over the past couple of years, and your botching of our beloved shows is just salt in the wound at this point. But anyway, that, that's all from me. Uh, until next time, bye-bye, sweet dreams.